I am Pastor Peggy from Slave Lake, Alberta. And I'm Pastor Diane from Norfolk, New York. Welcome to Warm Hearted Wednesday. Woohoo, 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 warm. I, I love Warm Hearted Wednesday. It's my favorite day of the week. And it's even more special when we have a guest. Yes, we have a special co host today. We do. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Can you tell us who you are and um, why we invited you? Absolutely. Okay, so I think you probably invited me because I'm slightly crazy. I'm sure that has something to do with the fact that I got the invitation. So I'm okay with that. I'm confident in, in my craziness. And uh, I also am connected to you guys through the Wesleyan Church, which is super special. So my name is Tanya and I'm the Executive Director of World Hope International in Canada. And for those of you who might not know, World Hope is the official relief and development agency for the Wesleyan Church of Canada. So I have the awesome privilege of being able to connect churches and people in Canada with international projects uh, of vulnerable people and connect them across the world. And our projects uh, serve the Wesleyan Church or Wesleyan communities around the world, which is pretty cool. Wow. Very that's cool. that's a that's a big job. We we love you. We love your spirit Aww, too. So I love you guys too. <laughs> that's great. So Pastor Diane, before we get started, maybe you should remind us why we meet at twelve thirty Central Time. Oh, for sure. Um, Jesus was asked in Mark twelve, "What is the greatest commandment?" and uh, he very wisely said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And we wanted to keep that central, and that, that verse actually occurs in Mark 12.30. So keeping God central, we decided to do our show at 12.30 Central Time. Yay. Which means 11.30 here in Slave Lake. And 1.30 here in Norfolk, New York. And what time in New Brunswick? And 2.30 in New Brunswick and PEI. We and half an hour Canada. <laughs> half an hour later in Newfoundland. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I, so we actually have a distributed headquarters, our actual office where donations are received and we have a, a small staff that care for all of our donors and churches is in Moncton, New Brunswick. So that's where the office itself is. It's not very big. And then we have distributed staff otherwise. So I'm actually located on PEI. So I live on PEI. I'm actually born and raised here. And this is where my family is and have been in vocational ministry for 15 or 16 years now and have never, ever, ever, ever in 15 years lived near any family members. So, um, whenever we came up with this new model to kind of connect more closely with the churches and with the people who are connected with World Hope, I requested to live on PEI and the board graciously uh, said that that was good. I travel normally like 50 to 60% of the time, so I'm often not here. And it really helps my husband uh, be able to have some support with the kids um, as I have family here. So that's been really, really nice blessing for us. Uh, my husband is a stay-at-home dad and he's been a stay-at-home dad now for almost six years. And he looks after our two kids. We have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, two boys. Wow. My husband's family live in the Adirondacks. They live in the Chestertown area. And, um, and like, so I go there all the time. So, I actually did not know that. Yeah, I mean, I don't right now because we're not allowed. I can't leave the island. I'm stuck here forever at this point. <laughs> It's not but forever. Anyways, it only seems that way. Someday I will come back. But yeah, <laughs> we come through New York State a lot because Jonathan's family is from there. And I would say he would consider upstate New York kind of home for him. Uh, he's a pastor's kid and moved around so much as a child. But a lot of really memorable years in his teenage years were in upstate New York. And that's kind of where he considers home. So we love like upstate New York so much that if we had a girl, uh, we were going to call her Addie after the Adirondacks. Like that's, that's how much so we cool. love the Adirondacks. We did not have a girl, so therefore we don't have that name in our family, but that's how much it's close to our heart for sure. So tell us about World Hope and um, what, what's been going on during this lockdown time and, and nationally, 
uh, locally, nationally, internationally, tell us anything at all. We'd love to hear. Totally. So we serve vulnerable populations around the world in the area of water, uh, social enterprise, anti-human trafficking, and health. So we are doing a lot right now during COVID because, I mean, that's all we're hearing, right? Or is the word vulnerable in our communities, which is good, that that's a, a thing that we're heightened to. Vulnerable people in our communities matter, and that's why we're staying home. That's why we're being safe um, and to keep COVID from spreading. But with World Hope, we've been serving vulnerable populations around the world in the poorest countries around the world for 20 years. And that's just literally what we do as an organization. And, uh, and uh, you guys have probably talked a little bit about our Wesleyan roots and how our Wesleyan roots are very social justice oriented. And we played a huge role as a denomination in ending slavery. We played a huge role in elevating the status of women. Uh, we have done so much um, for social justice um, historically. So it kind of works in really well that the Relief and Development Organization for the Wesleyan Church uh, focuses on vulnerable populations around the world. And, uh, and we're kind of spread all over 14 different countries. I can't go into all the places, but let me give you a few kind of ideas of what we're doing. A lot of people thought, oh, like your programs must have stopped because of COVID. Well, the truth is we actually are, are working harder than ever right now because of COVID, because the populations that we're working with are the ones who are most in danger of dying because COVID is starting to hit a lot of these countries or has already hit it even before it hit Canada. So um, in Southeast Asia, for example, Cambodia and the Philippines, we have been teaching people for the first time how to wash their hands with soap. So in many of these communities, they've never seen a bar of soap. They don't know what soap is. And a lot of them don't have clean water. And water is something that we spend a lot of time providing. Clean water, deep borehole wells, piped water, um, desalination units uh, of clean water. We've been doing that for years and we have been bringing water to communities so they can actually wash their hands for the first time in clean water, which you can imagine fighting COVID without clean water. Like it's just not possible, right? And then on top of that being like, hey, this is a bar of soap. We're gonna teach you how to wash your hands. And you know, you get in between your fingers and you wash up the top and you go through the back and like, there's actually a way to make sure you're washing your hands to keep yourself safe. So our staff have been spending tons of time over the last few months teaching people how to wash their hands, providing clean water and doing tons of hygiene and kind of health awareness. So they know what is COVID and how does this work and why is it dangerous and how can I protect my family? Um, things that we have our access to already that other people have never had access to in some places. In West Africa, we have some countries that are shut down and some countries that are not quite as bad. Uh, in Liberia, for example, we were not able to leave the county without permission because they've been shut down because of COVID, all of which is a good thing for them. Um, but it kept all of our well drilling uh, processes uh, from happening because we were needing to go out into the villages, out in the middle of nowhere where there is no water and drill wells. Uh, and then people came to us and they're like, hey, right here in the city, there's all these wells that are broken. Uh, they've been drilled by, you know, whoever, whatever, uh, but we can't get water from them or we can only get half a bucket instead of having water all day. Could World Hope consider rehabilitating those wells? So we've been rehabilitating the wells since we can't leave the town. We're now staying in the city and in Monrovia, we're just rehabilitating wells all over the city and people are getting clean water, some of them for the first time. Again, they've had a well, but it hasn't been working. Um, so that's been really, really cool to be a part of that. There's another place where we have kind of a spring and people go, there's, it's, a, it's clean water, it's safe water. People go and get their water there, but it's kind of like, like a little bit of a pond area where the spring comes in and people walk in the water while they're getting it and animals walk around it while they're getting it. So we're raising money right now to actually put a spring box on the top of that with pipes coming out so that it protects the spring. It keeps kind of the purity of that water clean and allows people to access the water without getting into it while they're accessing it because that also doesn't help. Uh, it contaminates the water. So that's right. been happening there. In Ukraine, we're shut down and our, our team has been in, the, in Hope House. They're in Hope House with the girls. Our house parents are there and they've been having lots of fun. They've been gardening and uh, you know doing fun games together and stuff. So they've been safe in Ukraine, which has been really cool. Um, and then in Haiti, we're actually finishing a solar powered water unit that's like larger than a couple of your guys' churches put together. When I say your guys, I mean our viewers. Like it's a huge, huge unit. It's like multiple homes and it's solar powered. They pull water from the ocean and turn salt water into clean drinking water. 
and it's going to provide clean drinking water for the entire island of Lagonave and also the Wesleyan Hospital there, which has not had water before. Um, they're gonna access clean water for the first time uh, ever, having continual access to water without having to have any gas or any fuel used. Which I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just hearing that. Cool. That is amazing. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And if anyone else is hearing about this and is like, this is so cool, we have paid for the actual solar powered plant uh, that we are putting it down, but we have to upgrade the solar panels in the hospital so that we can save money on the long term and help the hospital be able to access uh, a way to run without fuel as well. So if any churches are interested in donating in that, we totally are finishing that project right now. We have about forty to fifty thousand dollars left for that, and then the whole thing is going to be run on on sun. And there's tons of sun in Haiti, so that's good. <laughs> it's all good things happening there. That's kind of an overview of what we're doing in the midst of COVID right now. Wow. But anything going on on a national level here in Canada? Mm -hmm. So all of our, yeah, so all of our projects uh, typically are international. That's where our focus is in our vision statement, which is great. Yeah. Um, but one thing that we did to kind of change things up a little bit is we created this online platform called Get Support. And it's for local churches to use so that people in the community can say, this is what my need is during COVID. And the church can say, oh, well, we can meet that need and then connect people. Because a lot of our churches were having so much trouble uh, with the amount of manpower it took to like, oh, you, ha you want this, you need groceries, so-and-so needs groceries. Can you get groceries? Okay, can you get, here's their contact information. Okay, you guys can meet up at this time and like drop it off on their doorstep. So instead of having all of that overhead and administrative work happening, we created this online platform. Um, and we have more than 50 churches across North America using it right now. And then of course, tons of people are still giving. And people are asking me like, have your donations dropped? Like, is it terrible? And, and like donations have dipped a little bit, but we have so many people who are being so generous and saying like, wow, of all the times I need to give, now's the time. Like I need to give now because you guys are not only continuing to serve these vulnerable groups, but you are actually doing even more to make sure they're not going to die during this COVID pandemic. And that's been so special. I keep telling the story of this check that came in from a church and they were like, even in the midst of these really hard times, our people don't stop giving. One of the things we're doing this year, and I had no clue that COVID was gonna come in October, November when I started launching this, but I launched 20 wells in 2020. And I wanted the Canadian Wesleyan Church to provide 20 wells in West Africa in the year 2020. They're already been drilling those in January and February, and a lot of them are now doing rehabilitation wells in March. But who knew whenever tons of these churches signed on to say, we'll raise money for a full deep borehole well, that they were actually literally going to be providing life during a pandemic. Mm. They wouldn't have known. They had no idea that this was gonna happen. So we have 13 of the 20 wells that are pledged for or paid for. I'm so excited that we'll be able to continue providing clean water through wells in 2020. And like, it was a God thing that we decided to do this. Just, I mean, only God can know, right? That we needed to provide that clean water in the midst of a global pandemic that literally could have destroyed some villages who now have clean water. So I'm pretty grateful for that. Yeah, I presume that uh, World Hope International with John Lyon is doing a similar. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And I, again, I talk Canada and Maine. <laughs> me, and, me and Maine hang out together. But yeah, <laughs> Canada, US, Australia and UK all of us are working together for the same goals. So yeah, we're, we're doing rehabilitations in the States. We have churches that are giving money towards those, churches that are giving money towards full deep borehole wells, towards the Haiti project. All of the churches in, in the Wesleyan Church in North America are working together. So absolutely, yep. One other question, Tanya, um, before I ask you to just share with us what, whatever is on your heart, but how have you and your family been doing during this? Because, you know, I, I, I know you personally and know, know your style and everything like that. And you're an extrovert. So, so how have you guys been handling this as a family? Yeah. So, I mean, like, I'm like the highest extrovert on earth, probably. <laughs> like, I think, I think I tip the scales. Are you an extrovert, Peggy? You're like a closeted, kind of a closeted extrovert. Well, they call me an ampuvert. I, I'm neither one or the other. I can be I gotcha. both. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm like crazy, crazy, crazy off the charts extrovert, 100%, 1000%. And being with people gives me energy. So a lot of people are exhausted by my work travel schedule, but I just like get life out of it. Like it's so freeing for me and life giving. It, it's been 
really hard. Like honestly and truly, it's been so hard to be stuck at home um, because I just like being with people. And I Zoom, you know, all day like this. Uh, this is part of my job. I work from a computer and internet and my cell phone, but I love to be with people because I feel like together we do so much more. Um, so it's been a big shift for me personally. So there have been some really tough days where I'm like, I just feel kind of depressed or I feel down. Like I'm just feeling kind of, you know, because I'm not able to be out with people. Um, but we've been able to shift and do a few different things. I, I do, I'm doing more connections with people by Zoom and by Skype and stuff. So that's been really cool. But I have painted my entire house, <laughs> except for this room. And uh, I put up new trim and I've painted and I've turned down walls and we are changing all the light fixtures, like all of the, the, like, um, the light switches. We changed all the light switches and all the light plugs in the entire house. So that's kind of what's been going on during pandemic, but I can't wait to get out and hang out with people whenever this is over. I'm like, it's time, you know, but I, I want to make sure that this is a good thing and that it's safe and that people are not, you know, at danger, but I'm, I'm really excited for uh, what's going to happen whenever I can leave the house again. <laughs> during this time, uh, Dr. Joanne Lyon has been encouraging me to encourage people to give, even if it's like 10 bucks, but like, by giving to something bigger than yourself, it may, really makes you feel better. And it makes you know that you're a part of something bigger than yourself. And it makes you feel like you're actually helping in some way. You know, like I, like I feel like I can't help with the pandemic. I can't stop COVID. I can't come up with a vaccine, but like I can give so other communities are safe. And I'm very thankful that my community in Canada and like Diane, your community in, in New York, like we're safe. We have access to public health officers. We have access to medical systems. We have access to hospitals. Other places don't have any of those things. And by giving and then praying for those people that we give to really helps us feel like we're a part of something bigger. And I know it sounds super odd to say that in the middle of this, but just getting outside of yourself and like realizing that you're a part of something bigger and that there are other people who are worse off than you helps put it in perspective and helps keep the anxiety and the depression a little bit uh, at more of a minimum because you're actually getting outside of what you're seeing right there in your own personal situation. So that's kind of what I've been encouraging people to do. I've been watching people do that and have been hearing it's been really, really good for them to do that. So there's my little give pitch during COVID. So from Slave Lake, Alberta, I am Pastor Peggy. From Charlottetown PEI, I'm Tanya. And from Norfolk, New York, I'm Pastor Diane. We will see you tomorrow for Tadpole Thursday. Be safe. Be healthy. And be the church. Yay! Bye. Bye, everyone. See ya. See ya. I don't have corona. Do you, do do you do that before you preach, Diane? You're like, you like get up, you're like, just one second. <laughs> okay, we're ready. We're gathered here I might do God. that this week. <laughs> Good.